Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back, everybody. We've said this before. If you're going to redesign your living space, your workspace, you have to have a purpose in mind. She established that with us. Makes perfect sense. Our purpose today is designing or redesigning with children in mind. Kind of changes everything in terms of how you approach things, safety, and such. And we're going to dig into that today with a fantastic interior designer, Marsha. Marsha Moore is back with us. Welcome. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks. Good to be here. Yeah, this is something that we've, we have we haven't talked about. I, I don't even remember even looking at uh, children's rooms yeah, since we've we gotten together. Yeah, we haven't talked about it at all. So. Hmm. Um, What's your first thought? Somebody comes to you and says, "Let, let right, maybe we'll center on a, a, a kid's bedroom. You know, we can pick any yeah. room, your choice. So first of all, I need to know how old their kids, what, uh, how old they are, whether they're uh, male or female, and how they're going to use a particular space. If it's their, uh, a room uh, with just one child, or whether two children are sharing the room, or if it's a, like a lower level uh, rec room, how it's going to be functioning, what the functions will be for that. So I have all kinds of those kind of questions. Mm -hmm. And then it's also helpful to know, like if one of the children has ADHD or um, any kind of, of uh, special need, um, or if they're just one of them loves to read and wants a little tiny, you know, a, a, a nook for reading or that kind of thing. So I need to know a little bit about the kids before I start out. I want to say this, and it's not about me, but I just, I think I, I have to share it. So in 2014, I moved, I've since sold that house, but I moved partly for my kids. And where I was, I didn't have kids at that time. I had an older one, but not younger. Uh, and that house, loved the architecture, loved the neighborhood. However, it was a little small and there was no basement. So yeah, just didn't have as much space. The master bedroom, they had done a redesign. The master bedroom was huge. Two closets, wonderful, walk-in, wonderful. Kids' rooms, kind of tight. So I was like, ah, oh, all right. So I found the house. Everything fit into place, has a basement, big yard, all of that. I move. And the idea was the kids, the, the, they have the basement. So I bought an air hockey table. I set up my son's video stuff, had the gaming chairs. You know, I'm a geek with tech. So I was like, everything's mm -hmm. all set up. fantastic. Yeah. Here we go. They never used it. <laughs> yeah. It was. That happens. <laughs> I don't want to say it was a waste because I had some, some uh, workout equipment down there uh, and the laundry room. But short of that, it wasn't used. And at the time, my daughter was younger and she would say, well, I'm afraid to go down there, you know, because it's dark. So I, you know, had the light on, you know, motion sensor. And she's saying, well, the light would go off. So then I disconnected that. Uh, <laughs> my son never used it for gaming. It was like a palace. So just make sure <laughs> before, <Yeah. laughs> you know, that you're making those changes. And I'm I'm, I'm happy that I moved there because everything else was great. And uh, but the, the basement was never used yes. and, and was fully yes. finished. So yeah. just yeah. keep that in mind. I'm only sharing it. it, mm -hmm. it I might've looked at it differently. Um, maybe I wouldn't have moved. I don't know, but you have to make sure that, that it fits. Right. Right. Yeah. A lot of times, some kids want to be around their parents a lot. So they want to do homework at the kitchen table as opposed to in their bedroom. Point. So yeah, you have to know your kid to begin with and know what they need. Um, so those are all the questions we ask first. And then, um, so what I'm going to talk about mostly today is up until teenage years, because that's all, all the, the important things about um, no sharp corners, no breakables, no small objects, all those things that you do for babies to, and little kids is, is um, harder for some people to wrap their heads around than what you're going to do for teenagers. By that time, you've had kids for a long time, so you know what you're doing, mm -hmm. hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's a and, whole and, other ball game when they turn teenagers. Right. Yeah. And these, my kids were obviously preteen at that time. Yeah. A yeah. uh, lot of considerations and you know, comes right back to safety, right? Mm -hmm. So you were talking about uh, the, the house and how you thought it was going to function. I When my son was... Um, 
second grade, I think we moved into a new house and up the upstairs was a, his bedroom, a bathroom and a guest room. The main level was all my, my room and all the main living areas. And then the lower level had a, a family room in it. And I had, um, parties with friends who had kids of all ages. So it worked out really well. This is not something I even thought of, but it ended up working out really well because all the little kids would congregate up in Luke's room upstairs and the adults would all be on the main level. And then the lower level family room is where all the teenage kids hung out. So it was a great way to have a party when you all had to be inside and everybody had their spot and they didn't feel like, you know, the teenagers didn't feel like they had to be around the little kids and the little kids weren't underfoot. The adults could mm. actually enjoy themselves. So it was the perfect layout for that. What about the individual rooms themselves? There's, I, I'm sure a lot you can do in terms of building in bedding and, and all of that. Anything that uh, comes to mind for you? So, um, yeah, if it depending on how many kids are going to be in a room, if you need to have bunk beds or that kind of thing, because there's two kids in there, then we take a look at building it in or, you know, sometimes the bunk bed can uh, one could be up high and then you've got a desk underneath it. So there's all kinds of arrangements to do there. Um, one of the things that I always make sure of is that no bed is up high and close to a ceiling fan where they or they can get to it at all. You don't want them chopping off their hands. Um, so the layout of the room is, again, do you, are, do your kids want to do their homework in their rooms so that we need a desk in there, or do they want to be out in the living room? Um, my son was an only child and I was a single parent. He hated being in his room because he was alone and he was alone a lot. So when I, when it was just the two of us at home, he wanted to do his homework at the dining room table so that he could be near me. Going to his room was um, a punishment to him, even mm -hmm. though there was a TV and all kinds of toys and everything that what he didn't want to be alone. So, um, so yeah, one of those know your kid and know what they need kind of things. Um, one of the things that I like to do for kids is chalkboard walls. And mm. again, where is this chalkboard, chalkboard wall going to go? If you only have one child, it can be in their room so they can mess up that wall. Nobody sees it. it. You know, you can wipe it off every once in a while. But if you've got more than one child, then you can't have the other kid coming into the one kid's room and, and that's my board. You can't play in here. So then maybe it needs to be in your lower level or in whatever room it is where they play a lot. Um, one time I did a chalkboard that was underneath the the kitchen island where the where there was island seating so underneath there where you would uh you know run your feet against up against the cabinets we made it a chalkboard wall so the kids could play there and it was pretty much invisible once you um put the chairs or the stools in front of it so it was a great place to do that what a cool idea yeah, yeah. It, it was fun <laughs> <laughs> and it keeps them in the room so you can uh -huh. watch them. And, right. And right. Uh, side note, back to the ceiling fan, it is in, it's my opinion that a ceiling fan probably shouldn't be in a kid's room. I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying, and my daughter, this was mm, two years ago. So she was 14. Mm -hmm. her, her and her friends already got to the ceiling fan. I'll just say that. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it was a, uh, what can we do with that? Yeah. Uh, so it was, you know, a little, the one, the globe we, on there. A little we bit throw profile. up there and make it twirl around. Yeah. No, no injuries reported, nothing bad, but it's, you know, yeah. in, in hindsight, uh, it's a new toy for what, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. what age, even mm -hmm. if, you know, if they're teenagers sitting on the bed, like, mm, uh, oh, well, yeah. Wow, what do yeah. I do there? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's my opinion, but I figured out you. Um, um, another thing with, uh, uh, that goes along with chalkboard walls. If you use semi-gloss paint in a room, um, it's much easier to wash it off as opposed to flat paint. So sure. in a kid's room, the shinier, the better as far as washing it off. And and some paints are very washable and some aren't. So that's one thing I always look at. Should you even consider going going as as glossy as you can to the point where it doesn't look ridiculous? Because I look at a lot of institutions, uh, schools, it's always very, very glossy. Shiny. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. So the gloss, the, the bad part about glossy paint is it shows every imperfection in your wall. The, the higher the sheen, the more it shows imperfections. But in a kid's room, that's, you know, who cares? <laughs> kids destroy things anyway. That's their role in life. So right. And and it also shows um, your painting ability as well. Yes, uh, it does. Every stroke <laughs> there, it's like you know, it, it it's it's almost like a ticking time bomb when you mm -hmm. you know if you're mm -hmm. if you're rollering it, you know, got to get got to get done before it starts drying over here. It's all yeah. mash it all in. Yeah. So, but there is many advantages of that because you can wipe it off. Yeah. You know, when it gets while dirty. we're on the subject of paint, I am frequently have. Um, mom say, oh, she wants to paint her room bright purple. And I just hate purple. I don't want that. And I'm like, no problem. I can deal with that. So what I do is I always want kids to be involved in what we're putting in their rooms. That's their room. They should get to a say in it. Um, but it also needs to be a paint color that the parents are okay with. Mm -hmm. So I, I, has ask that they choose the bed linens first. If the bed linens are going to be pink and purple and have uh, unicorns on it, or it's going to be Harry Potter or whatever the theme is, we want all that theme stuff to be in things that are disposable, like your bed linens um, or a pillow or something. We don't want to put wallpaper up that's Harry Potter wallpaper and then three years later, the kid is out of Harry Potter land and, and it hates his wallpaper. Yep. So I have them choose that stuff. And then I can choose the paint color that goes on the walls that looks good with um, the, the bed linens. And what I do is choose three or four colors of that purple that I know is going to go with the bed linens. And it's always a softer, nicer version of whatever the child wants. And then I have a discussion with them and they get to choose it, but they choose from those four colors. And 90 time, nine times out of 100, they're good with that. They just wanted to have the choice. Really good point. Yeah. But it's, instead of, you know, the free for all, pick a color, honey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Give them options. <laughs> yeah. Great, great idea. This is, you know. Another you fun thing to do on a wall is if you do a few geometric lines on a wall, then you can have three or four different paint colors. And if they really do want, you know, if they're dead set on some kind of really bright purple, that goes in your smallest little geometric area. And then you have three other kinds of purple or other colors on the wall that are, are the majority of the wall. So again, they get to have what they want, but it's not overall the entire room. What about storage storage is uh uh definitely something that you need to take care of for kids so when you have little kids um and they're at the point where they need to dress themselves then the closet needs to have hangers or little cubbies that are on their level so rather than having everything hang up high you have things that hang down low so what i've done before is you have high storage and low storage the low storage is summer clothes in the summer, the high storage is your winter clothes so that it's out of sight and they don't, they can't get to it. Um, or things that you don't want them to put on all the time, like a good dress or a good coat or whatever that, that is only used occasionally. Um, and then the storage bins need to be easy for them to get in and out of. So they either have to be really, really good rollers on, on them or, um, lightweight plastic or whatever that, that's easy for them to uh, use. And clear is better than not clear because half of the world doesn't know it, it exists if they have to open up a drawer. <laughs> if they mm. can see it, they know it's there. If they have to open it up to see it, they will forget all about it. So <laughs> what about storage um, seating and building it within? So it's, it's kind of permanent. It has uh, like a dual function. Um, so I, I love built-ins. Um, I, I do that uh, frequently. Again, you have to make sure that that built-in is going to age well with the child. So if you do a built-in and it's uh, the size of a, what a four-year-old needs, then you're going to have to rip it out and redo it when they get to be 11 or 12 and they're a lot taller So or and bigger and need a bigger seat. So um, uh, it, it's fun to have a window seat under a window in a, in a kid's room and maybe have, uh, if you have the room and if big, the room's big enough, you can have built in like bookcase kind of things on either side of that, where you have lower level storage that's behind doors 
uh, rather than drawers, because those kind of drawers would get heavy and easy to, for them to pull out on top of themselves. But uh, behind the doors, you could have games and things that, that are not pretty. Mm. And then a few uh, open shelves above where they can put their, when my son was young, it was Beanie Baby collection. So <laughs> whatever that, <laughs> whatever is mm. popular <laughs> at that time. <laughs> what about shelving? Because now you now you're bringing back memories of well, the house I just mentioned, where I started putting up shelves. I try to make them attractive, and just mm -hmm. those collections, if you will, right. um, would go up there. Any thoughts on that? So I loved having a few things out where they can see them. You know, the the things that they really love. Um, if it's something that is very precious to them. You want to put it up high enough they can't get to it, which also means your shelves need to be sturdy enough uh, that they can't pull them apart. If they're going to try and climb up to get to something, it, the shelves need to be set in stone, you know, not the kind that that pull off because they're, they're just sitting on a little um, protrusion from the wall. So that's really important. Anytime, anything that, that a kid can destroy, they will. When my son was little, when he first got out of the crib, we just put a mattress on the floor because he was a very much a roamer in bed. So whatever bed we gave him, he was going to fall out of. So he would just was on a mattress on the floor and he would wake up in the middle of the night. We would hear him upstairs moving his furniture around in his room, <laughs> making all kinds of noise. He he was a bruiser. He he could move this really heavy dresser away from the wall and move it around in the middle of the room. That's what he would do at night. So no, what I tell people is that kind of thing has to be attached to the wall. If you have a heavy dresser uh, that can tip, it needs to be attached to the wall. So he never, he never thankfully did that, never uh, pulled it over on himself because it was pretty low to the ground. But yeah, so that kind all those kinds of things that you don't think about necessarily, um, how, how sturdy is your uh, curtain rod that can they yank out it and pull it out of the wall? Um blinds the same kind of thing can they yank on them or destroy them uh um roman shades have become very um standardized with with national rules about what you can do with a roman shade because they used to have um, a loop and kids could hang themselves you could get it around your neck and not be able to get it off so there's very, you have to take classes on how to build Roman shades. If you're a, a somebody who does, uh, who creates window treatments for a living, you have to pass a class on what to do with Roman shades. Oh, wow. Wasn't even aware. Yeah. Yeah. I have one uh, person that I, who does all kinds of window treatments for me and she doesn't do, she's getting ready to retire. She goes, I didn't take the class because I'm not going to be doing this for much longer. And I didn't want to have to learn all that. So if I want Roman shades, I have to use somebody else because they have huh. to have to have gone through that class. And I'm trying to think of the configuration of those shades, but there's no breakaway from a lot of, you know, typical shades. Now there is a plastic piece where if there's any pressure, a right. substantial pressure, it breaks apart. Yeah, it could break away, but, but if it breaks away, then it could come off the wall and, and, you know, land on the kid. So, okay. yeah. So. Yeah. And, and thanks for the reminder about anchoring it to the wall, even, even dressers and things like that, you know, mm -hmm. if you're concerned about it, um, I know it's not easy and it's not pretty when you remove it or you yeah. reconfigure the room, but <clears throat> it is what it is. So um, as far as what I want to put in a room, either a kid's room or their playroom in a house, easy to clean, easy, easy to take care of uh, polyester rugs or polypropylene rugs. You can, take a polypropylene rug outside and hose it down or, you know, something that, that is washable, mm. like the new ruggables things, you can stick them in the washer and, and wash them off. Um, I don't buy expensive furniture. I'm fine with Ikea or, or, uh, you know, a sofa that's, that maybe is not the best quality, but it's going to get, you know, people are going to, uh, they're going to jump on it. They're going to throw up on it. They're going to, you know, the snotty noses on it. So, buy cheap buy often <laughs> and, and that that's fine for the kids rooms it's just don't want to spend a lot of money on something they're going to destroy you know that, so let's 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 go to that point should you really be shopping 
or stuff that's disposable in in so many words when it comes to uh, yeah your stuff for your kids like that's your mindset going into it. My it's, for me, it needs to last. It needs to be the the in the five to ten year or five or five to six year range of how long it's going to last because when they're little kids, they really are hard on furniture and that, you know, they've got dirty fingers and, and that that's just gets ruined. So um, it might, there's no reason to spend a lot of money on it and it's good enough for them. They don't have bad backs and, or, you know, need any kind of support when they're sitting down. So it doesn't have to be good quality. And the same with um, a desk that for a, a little kid, that's, they're only going to need that desk for a few years. They're only doing homework for five or six years before they go away to college. So it doesn't have to be great quality. I don't, I don't want it to be just really cheap, unsightly things, but you know, I don't spend a lot of money on those. Got it. Uh, well, I think that's where the, your expertise comes in because you can take some of those things that might not be more expensive and make them look a certain way mm -hmm. where they're, they look fantastic and they fit the design and all of that. Yeah. You can, there are a lot of really fun looking, um, good looking area rugs now that are not expensive at all. That's uh, with the advent of polypropylene and polyester things. That's, that's, uh, you can just find all kinds of things that look good and, and they'll, they'll last all through childhood and then you can just throw it out and you don't care about it anymore. What about, now we mentioned Ikea, but you know, have you, have you ever shopped on Facebook marketplace and places like that for so, stuff that's, you know, le slightly used where you don't want to make that big investment. I personally don't do that for my clients. Whatever I'm going to get them is new. If they want to shop on Facebook marketplace, I'm happy for them to say, I just saw this. What do you think of it? Um, will it work in the room? I want to be involved in the design of the room rather than then just buying something, thinking it's going to fit and then it's too big or it, the color is hideous or whatever. So that's a discussion I would have with anybody who's in, in that mindset of trying to shop uh, for anything used. It's, you have to involve me enough to make sure it's going to fit. Right. Yeah. A hundred percent. And, but sometimes you 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 get some good finds. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You can. I, you and, absolutely and, can. In the house that I'm referring to all the artificial plants in that house all came off of um, Facebook marketplace and people sell that stuff and it's in perfect condition. Well, maybe a little mm -hmm. bit of dust, you wipe it down like really expensive plants. Yeah. Not yeah. exaggerating. $20. Yeah. It's mind blow. <laughs> but the challenge is getting it to your home because, mm -hmm. you know, I got some pretty tall, you know, 10 foot mm -hmm. plants or whatever, just, you know, dramatic eight foot, um, just transporting, you know, a little bit of a challenge. You can figure that out. But that's, that's what my convertible's for. <laughs> Put the top down and I can get anything home. <laughs> Ooh, never thought of that. Uh, you're, you're a wealth of interesting ideas, Marsha. That's really the awesome. design, the designer's pickup truck is, that's what I call it. That's yeah. my, and, and, that's and, my and, convertible. And you probably bought it, not even thinking that, thinking like, yeah. but, but subconsciously. I, I bought, bought it, it thinking I'm not going to be able to put anything into here. And it, yeah, yeah. I can get almost anything in there that I could get in the SUV I had beforehand. Never Just can't be raining. Right. <laughs> What uh, what's the best way to connect with you, find you if somebody needs some advice on kids' rooms or any kind of design? MarshaMoreDesign.com. Marsha is spelled M-A-R-C-I-A. And more? M-O-O-R-E. Gotcha. I guess there are different ways of spelling that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And starts with a conversation. You know, everybody's got ideas. They can bounce them off you in terms of what you can handle and uh, take it from there. Thanks so much for being here today. You're so welcome. We'll see you next week. We'll be right back. Hey. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. 
For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.